Goals are not about what you achieve. Goals are about what they help you to become. Coming up on today's video. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I am Justin Ebert, joined as always by Dr. Hugh Beatty, the wellness doc. Thank you for tuning into another episode of Limitless Longevity, where Dr. Beatty, we're talking goals again. And I know we've talked about them on the channel before, but first of all, we have new viewers. Sometimes people forget it's an important topic to revisit. And I really want to hit home that point that sometimes we get caught up in, well, what do I, what do I get by achieving a goal, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say, I, you know, I know in one of our earlier videos, we talked about that I'm an, an avid reader and how many books I try to read each year. But even if my goal is, let's say, to read 50 books this year, I don't think the point of the goal is to be able to check off a list that I read 50 books. No. Really, the goal is about what I learn and what can I apply and how reading those 50 books allow me to be a better business owner, better with my finances, better in my relationships, better a better husband, a better father, better community member. It's not about achieving the 50 books. It's about what those 50 books can help me do and be better in the world. Yeah. It's like my goal is not to drink water and get a good night's sleep and all that stuff. My goal is to become healthy. That's right. And whatever that requires me to do, that's what I should do. Yeah. So what are you becoming? Yes. You know, I, I like what with, 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 um, someone says, we are human becomings, not human beings. Oh, I like that. I haven't heard that one. I like that. That's <laughs> good. we're becoming all the time. Right, we're absolutely. something. Yeah. Either something good yeah. or something bad. Absolutely. So. We're, all, we're all in that, that metamorphosis process, yes. right? You will become better or worse by engaging in this act. Yes. Are you okay with what that trajectory yes. is going to be? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Only God is I am. Yeah. Because we are constantly evolving. Yes. Or, he's unchanging. Yeah, he's unchanging. I'm changing all the time. Changing. That's we're right. All the time. So that's right. We're becoming. So that's he, right. He's a being. He's a I am. That that's right. And, and I like I like that that take and that point. And and we can apply that, I mean, really to multiple areas of life. And you know, you and I were talking off camera before about, about weight loss and right. What can people do to help them lose weight? Well, guess what? There's not really a whole lot of new science in that regard. You you want to lose weight? The simple answer has always been eat less and do more work, right? Like that. So if we want to oversimplify it, there's that. But really, especially in our culture and society today, the, the point of exercising and the point of weight loss is not to weigh less. It's about the person who has a better understanding and relationship with food, right? We are, we are chronic overeaters and chronic overindulgences. And really, we need to reprogram the way our brain works, the way our subconscious thinks about food, so that we become something different in relation to food. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, though, is that I know a lot of people say, well, you can be obese and healthy. But just the, the definition of obesity is an inflammatory illness. Yeah. And so any inflammation can lead to illness. So so I beg to differ that you could be obese and healthy. And you hear that a lot. Yeah, the people who tend to be obese and uh, uh, appear to be healthy are young people. Yeah. They can get away with it. But when you start hitting 40 and 50 and 60, you start seeing those inflammatory illnesses show up. Mm -hmm. So you're becoming hypertensive. You're becoming diabetic. You're becoming what? Something else. You're right. Becoming, as we talked about. Well, and I, and I think maybe a more appropriate answer is not you can be obese and be healthy it's that you might be obese and not have physical manifestations of symptoms yes, yet yes, but that's yes. different than being healthy yes <laughs> absolutely okay so let's talk about i mean we're, we're running through areas where we can apply this to life we've talked about books and getting smarter we've we've talked about health finances is, an, is another big one oh, yeah, that yeah. people struggle with and whether you want to follow what we might call as like a you know a dave ramsey principle or a rich dad poor dad principle like there there's different varieties and approaches to money out there but the point is you need to change the way and the relationship that you have with money and yes. you need to learn to use it as a tool, not be manipulated and controlled by it. Yeah. Either you're becoming broke or you're becoming <laughs> wealthy. I mean, I mean, life is dynamic. It's not static. That's right. You know so if you sit there and do nothing, then guess what? You will become nothing. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You're still becoming something, even if it's nothing. <laughs> Well, I, I, no, I, I laughed when you said that, uh, you know, you're either becoming broke or not. I've always just been broke, Dr. Betty. My, my kids, my kids want to ask all the time, like, dad, why don't we go more places and do more things? And I said, because I had to decide 15 years ago whether I was going to have kids or money. And I chose kids. So you, guys, you guys are stuck. But broke is better than being bankrupt. Well, that's true. I'm not bankrupt. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> and I'm really not broke. I'm rich and abundantly blessed, right? Yes. But but it's that it's that whole point. But even I mean, even in joking with that, it is it's about the mindset that we carry, right? Am, am I looking for reasons to be broke? Which guess what? It's going to lead me to reasons to be oh, disgruntled yeah. and abuse food or relationships or status or power. Because once you allow one aspect of that negative mindset to to set in and infect your body, right. it's going to start to infect all the other areas of your life as well. Yeah, that is so true. And so you have to keep a mindset of, of what you want to become. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing is, are we becoming, in my particular perspective, am I becoming more like Christ? That's my focus. Mm -hmm. Or am I becoming more like someone who is not of Christ? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and there's people out there who will hold you accountable for that. That's right. Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's those accountable partners out there. But, but yeah, so the thing is, what, what is your real ultimate uh, goal? Yeah. And and the thing is, like, as a practicing physician, I choose uh, wellness because I want my patients to become healthy. Yep. For a long time, I practiced medical care and the patients were were locked into medical care. Yeah. And they they, they it showed because they were medically managed. They weren't becoming healthy. They were becoming sick because any time you give someone medications on a chronic basis, they aren't becoming healthy. Right. Right. You, you know, you, you mentioned trying to become more Christ-like. It's one of the reasons I tell people uh, that I refuse to put bumper stickers on my car. First of all, I'm not a big fan of bumper stickers. Yeah. But second of all, if I put Christian Jesus-inspired bumper stickers on my car, then guess what? I have to drive like Jesus would. And I currently do not. Yeah. And I don't want those stickers associated. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you, you put that on there. And the one time you yell at somebody. That's right. <laughs> I, I I need I need to grow in my maturity behind the wheel. Uh, I honked at somebody yesterday for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I'm well aware that I have some growth areas to do, right? And that point is ultimately, what are we becoming? And it related to that, and maybe this is a, a good spot for us to, to wrap that video up. Since we're always becoming something, whether it's positive or negative, even if it's positive and, it, and it's good, I still want to argue, Dr. Beatty, mm -hmm. yeah, but you still need to be intentional about it. Oh, yeah. I can read 50 books, but if they're about 50 topics that I don't care about or I'm not going to be able to apply, again, what's the point of reading 50 books? Right. I need to I need to sit down and strategize and say, who is it that five years from now, 10 years from now I want to be? What do I want to accomplish? What's the influence I want to have? Who do I want to have helped? Right. Now I'm going to expose myself to those situations that are going to help me become that in the process. That's very true. And so, so you have to be careful who you become. Yeah. Because... If you aren't inten intentional with with the direction you're going in, then you're going to end up definitely in the wrong direction. Right, absolutely. Which means a part of that is who do you hang around with? And I'm here to tell you, Dr. Beatty is one of the best that you've been hanging around with. So make sure that you follow him, engage with his content, come see him in his wellness practice. He will help you become something much, much better. And it is good to have that partner in the journey. So make sure you are, you have liked and subscribed. You're sharing this video. Go ahead and leave us a comment. What is the goal that you're working on? But ultimately, how are you going to help it have you, how are you going to help it become something in your life? Give it meaning, give it purpose, give it direction. This is Dr. Beatty. I'm Justin Ebert. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you on a future video. <laughs> was speaking this week at a local HR convention, speaking on this idea of change. And one of the things that we tried to reiterate to people is change is not always easy or fun. Bob Proctor has this great quote, though, and he says that everybody loves to change, but everybody hates being changed, which really means if you can get this change to be their idea, they're much more likely not only to make it, but to keep it. The same holds true even in our personal life. Sometimes we get scared about this prospect of change, whatever life transition we might be facing. But figure out what the positive is, what lies on the other side of that change, what's the benefit, and get excited about that change and realize the opportunity instead of being forced into being changed, you'll have better outcomes, you'll have better results, you'll have a better end service, and ultimately you will get to experience more joy.